Hi everybody, I'm Bill Russell. I'm the Associate Dean International at the School of Business here at the University of Dundee. Today I'm going to talk about two closely related programs, the MFIN in International Finance and the MSC in Banking and Finance. Uh, and I'm going to talk about these together, partly because of the similarity in structures, uh, but also because they have the same uh, program leader. Listen, let me first start by sharing some overheads with you. And hopefully this works for us. Uh, and here we go. And I can also make this full screen. So the program uh, director is Murat Mazabas, and um, he is very experienced, not only in being a program director, but uh, also he has a background in central banking and, and uh, applied uh, real world finance and, and economics in the background. Um, he came to us a number of years ago, came to us in Dundee and a number of years ago, and he's been incredibly successful since he's got here. More importantly for you, uh, he's very caring and supportive of the students. Uh, so when you arrive, uh, you'll be able to rely on him to, uh, to look after you. The uh, two programs are what we call conversion degrees. Now these conversion degrees are open to people from any background. So on the conversion degrees, um, about 40% of the students will have an undergraduate degree in business. About 40% will be non-business but technical. And that would be um, degrees like engineering, physics, chemistry, uh, maths, statistics, and the like. And 20% uh, are non-business and non-technical. So these students will come with a background maybe in music or um, uh, English literature or history, um, psychology slightly on the edge between technical and non-technical. Geography, again, slightly on the edge between technical and non-technical. Um, if you have a non-business, um, non-technical background, then we also require you to have some mathematics from your high school years so as to be able to handle the, the technical uh, components or parts of the program. To get onto these programs, um, you have, uh, you need a 2-2, two -two. you've already applied, so you will already understand that, a 2-2 two -two or the equivalent of a 2-2 two -two classification of a UK degree. Um, there are multiple pathways and specialisms, so we'll show you about that as we go along. And the reason why these multiple pathways are there is because um, it's a very strong signal to your employer about what your skills base is and, and also what your interest is in. Um, and importantly, you can swap between the degrees and between the uh, pathways um, after you arrive. So during the foundation program, you'll have a, a lecture from me or a talk from me about how to, the strategy of how to choose your program and your pathway. You'll get to talk to the program leaders, you'll get to talk to past students, or not past students, students who've come in the last intake, who are still on the program. Um, you get to find out about the modules, you get to talk to the module leaders if you want to. Um, and so uh, towards the end of that first week, you will be able to choose your modules, your pathway and your degree. Now, about 25% of the students will end up choosing a different pathway on the same program, same, and about 10% of the students will actually change the program entirely as they come. We'll, show, we'll see that when we um, show you the uh, pathways for the programs. Um, all of the uh, postgraduate taught master's, student, uh, master's programs at the, in the School of Business have a January start and a September start. The September start this year is going to be August um, 5th, wrong, October the 5th, October the 5th, um, and we've pushed it back just so as to allow people more time to be able to organize uh, to arrive in Dundee. There are two um, uh, intakes, as I say. Uh, there's another intake in January. It really doesn't matter whether you come in September or January. Um, if September, October the 5th, if that intake is the one that you prefer, then you should work towards that. Um, and if for any reason whatsoever that you can't make it, then we will help you transfer your offer and any scholarships to January. The other thing that we're doing is that we're making it as flexible as possible at the start. So um, the teaching process is what is going to be what we call blended learning. Um, and there will be some material videos and material which is online, which you do beforehand. 
And then you will have um, interaction with the lecturers and tutors and the other students in cloud-based um, uh, uh, cloud uh, sort of workshops and seminars as you're going along. Now, the advantage of that is that we allow students to um, matriculate, which is registering for the program uh, online, and then you'll have access to the materials so that you can, can, you can start your learning process and then arrive uh, one, two, three, four, whatever weeks later when it's convenient to you. We've set it up like that because of a number of factors associated with COVID. Um, we're not quite sure how the, uh, uh, the country borders are going to operate and when they're going to be open completely. And even if they are open, then the airfares may be very expensive at the start and you might want to um, wait and come after a few weeks. But it's completely up to you. The, the flexibility is there for you. Um, there are also uh, internships, uh, which we'll talk some more about in China, Vietnam, Mexico and the UK on these programs. Uh, and we'll talk a bit about that because they're part of the project or it's one way of being able to take the project. In summary though, what is the purpose of these programs? And the purpose is that um, what you're trying to do is you're trying to signal to your employer that not only that you're very clever, but you have a particular skill set in business. In this case, it's finance or banking and finance. And so you may come from any background whatsoever. You, you've probably got a, a brain the size of a large planet. And what you're trying to do is signal to your employer that you're also interested in finance or banking and finance. And that gets you the uh, job interview, which you then are able to shine in because of the skills that you learned over the whole process. If you have a background in um, business, what are you trying to do? Well, you're probably um, trying to signal to your employer that uh, while you've got a very broad background in business, you're trying to focus uh, on the finance or the banking and finance aspects of business. So it's, you're turning your focus, you're, you're indicating to your em uh, future employers about particular skills that you have uh, and interests that you have as you're going along. So we have these two uh, base programs, the international finance, international banking and finance. Um, the international finance is an MFIN and not an MSC. And part of the reason we've done that is because uh, in surveying employers and talking to employers, uh, what we found was that this was a more of a signal of a, of a professional approach rather than just purely academic. It was more of a signal of a professional approach uh, to uh, finance. So the base program is MFIN International Finance, but you can also do International Finance and Investment Management. So this is Portfolio Management and International Finance Risk and Regulation. Uh, on the International Banking and Finance uh, group of programs, there's the base program, International Banking and Finance. There's also International Banking where you're specializing and signaling strong interest in the banking sector. International Banking and Investment Management, again, it's banking, but it's with also investment um, portfolios, managing investment portfolios, and then banking risk and regulation. The risk and regulation one is quite interesting because we went and talked to banks and people in the finance sector and we said, listen, where is it that you always have employment opportunities? And they just said straight away, the thing which is always in demand, doesn't matter whether you're having good times in the banking industry or bad times in the banking industry, the, re the time, the area which there is always a demand for um, staff is in risk and regulation. And you can understand that. In the good times, you've got to manage the risk, and in the bad times, you've got to manage the risk as well and understand the regulations. So these are quite popular um, pathways for both of these um, program groups. Um, the structure of the course, because these are what we call conversion degrees, what we do is we've, we've made the um, uh, slim down the dissertation to a project, which makes it equal to one module. Uh, and then you have eight modules, which are based on the topics and all the skills and the understanding of the, of the subject matter. The reason we did that was that say you come with an engineering degree, then if you have the normal structure, which is a large dissertation plus a, a, a research methods plus quantitative methods, you're left with only three or so modules, three, four modules, which are focusing on new skills and understanding. 
And if you don't already have a background in finance, then that isn't, isn't enough for you to be able to write the dissertation. But also, it's not enough to be able to uh, convince your employer that you actually know enough about finance or banking and finance. And so what we've done is we made the project smaller. Uh, employers tell us that they would prefer a more focused uh, business report project. Uh, than a large um, dissertation, a discursive dissertation. And that frees up these eight modules, which are um, all about skills and understanding of the subject matter. The uh, eight modules are split into uh, core modules, which are the same across all of the um, pathways. Not exactly in this case, because if you go back to here, um, the MFIN International Finance is the only completely unstructured um, uh, program in all of the School of Business in the sense that all of the finance modules are in there and you choose the finance modules which are of particular interest to you or important to you in terms of that career that you're going to go for. But otherwise, there will be core modules which are the same across the, the programs, compulsory modules which are defining the particular pathway, and then there will be some optional modules which are in those pathways as well. So you get to choose between a small number of, uh, of uh, modules uh, to complete your degree. The project is, uh, all of these um, programs have a project uh, and it's done over the summer, summer term. And there's three ways that you can do the project. You can either do it as an individual project, uh, just as a standard report, you can do it as an applied consultancy project. Now, the applied consultancy project is one where we have um, interactions with firms around Dundee. They provide questions or, or problems which they can't solve. And then a small group of students will act like consultants with a supervisor, act like consultants to this firm to answer the problems that they've put up. And then the last one is a global internship. Uh, which is managed by Pagoda Projects, and you can take that in China, Vietnam, Mexico, or Manchester here in the UK. Um, about 50% of students choose to do the individual project, about 25% choose to do the applied consultancy project, and then about 25% of the students choose to do the global internship. The global internship is uh, organised, as I say, by Pagoda Projects. We pay, we pay for that, or the School of Business pays for it. I don't personally, but the School of Business pays for. Um, but you will have to uh, cover costs of flights and living expenses, and um, most likely the accommodation is um, covered by the either the firm, well, by the firm in the for the internship. Global uh, internships uh, have pretty much, uh, nobody's missed out on a global internship so, so far. Um, around about half of the students show an interest in the internship, uh, and that usually whittles down to about a quarter, and we provide about a quarter of the students um, to go off on an internship. This year, COVID-19 has interfered with this uh, internship process, and what we did uh, was, well, two things happened. The students, some of the students returned to China, uh, the Chinese students returned to China, uh, and 17 of those went to Chengdu and were able to do their internships face-to-face -face in Chengdu. Uh, the remaining uh, students uh, did the internship remotely. So Pagoda Project set up a system of being able to interact with the firm, um, and so you were able to do your internship remotely uh, online. Uh, but there is also a whole lot of other um, uh, seminars and workshops and introductions to um, uh, business people in the local area of where your internship is, so as to be able to understand um, the local environment as well. Um, so they've all been uh, very successful. So listen, I think this is a good place to stop. Uh, there will be uh, a way to uh, contact me and ask questions if you want to. Um, mm. Uh, when you see the link to this video. Um, thank you for taking the time to watch the video right to the end. Um, and I hope you do make it to Dundee. If you do, you'll see me very early on. Come up, knock on my door, chat to me, tell me about your journey to Dundee. I'll always be um, uh, interested in finding out about your background and how you got to Dundee. So we'll leave it there. Um, I wish you all the best. Bye now.